guys, my name is Carlina from Pymer and Paltworks, and today we are going to be talking about which desktop laser is the best on an array of different categories. We're going to be comparing the Thunderbolt, the X-Tool P2, and the Glowforge Pro. I know there are a lot of different lasers out there, but these are the ones that we found to be the most popular. Let's start off with pricing. Now these prices are based off of 2024 pricing without any discount. So we're going to start off with the Thunderbolt, which is $5,495. Next is the X-Tool P2, which is $5,000. And lastly is the Glowforge Pro, which is $6,995. Next is wattage. All three of these lasers have different wattages. So first we're going to start off with the Thunderbolt, which is a 30 watt radio frequency tube, which is comparable to a 60 watt glass tube. Next is the X-Tool P2, which is a 55 watt glass tube. And lastly is the Glowforge, which is a 45 watt glass tube. To break down the radio frequency tube to the glass tube, the radio frequency tube is a little bit more durable because it is a metal box. The glass tube is more likely to break, which is more expensive. So the glass tube is more costly. However, the glass tube does last longer. So when you weigh out between the durability and the cost for expense, I feel like they both kind of wash each other out. The only other thing with the radio frequency tube is that you do not need a chiller, whereas the glass tube needs a chiller, which in both of these, they are built in the machine. Next is the cut area between the machines. Now they all are around the same size. However, they slightly vary a little bit. The Thunderbolt cut area is 20 by 12 inches. The X-Tool P2 is 23 and a half by 12 inches. And lastly, the Glowforge is 11 by 19 and a half inches. Although the X-Tool has the largest cutting surface, it does not have the largest depth for engraving. The Thunderbolt offers a four and a half inch engraving depth with the lowering of the bed and it can actually go to six and a half inches with the removal of the crumb tray. The X-Tool P2 offers a two and a half inch depth with the removal of the knives, and you can get an additional depth with the purchase of the riser bed, which then gives you eight and a half inches to work with. But like I said, you then have to purchase the riser bed. Lastly is the Glowforge, which maxes out at two inches with the removal of the crumb tray. And that is all you can get with the Glowforge. So as you can see, the Thunderbolt has the largest depth for engraving when it comes to the machine right out of the box. Next, let's talk about software. Lightburn is one of my favorite softwares to work with. I've been working with it for a very long time. And thankfully, the Thunderbolt offers this free with the purchase of one of their lasers. So with the purchase, you get the Lightburn for free and you have free upgrades for up to a year. After that, if you'd like to upgrade your Lightburn, you do have to purchase them. But other than that, you can just keep the software that you have and continually use it. Xtool offers their own software, which is the Xtool Creative Space. It is very user friendly. I've used it a bunch. It is not my favorite because I have ran into a few issues with it. It has frozen and shut down a few times on me while I was working on projects, but it is free and it comes with the Xtool. The Glowforge also has its own program similar to the X-Tool, which is the Glowforge app. It is very user-friendly as well. They do offer a free version. However, if you'd like to upgrade to their premium package with the app, it is a $600 annual charge. Now this $600 does offer you unlimited space and unlimited storage with your designs, access to a variety of different shapes, fonts, and files that they will offer to you guys. Now let's talk about warranty, which is very important with lasers because things do happen. Thunder offers a two year warranty on all of their machines and their customer and technical support is all United States based. They also offer a phone number on their website that you can call and get in touch with a representative that is United States based that you can talk to and discuss any issues that you're having with their lasers. So about a year ago, I actually had an issue with my laser. So I called up that number right away. And within five minutes, I was on the line with a US-based technical support rep who was able to walk me through my issue. And within that same hour, I had my laser up and running again. Now let's talk about the X-Tool and the Glowforge warranty. So the X-Tool offers a one-year warranty on their machines, and they do not offer United States-based technical support. What this means is you will be dealing with someone who is not from the US, emailing back and forth, and this can run into some communications issues, which I have dealt with in the past. Usually when there's a problem, it takes around 
five to 10 days to get it resolved when you're emailing back and forth with someone who is not United States based. The Glowforge now also offers a one year warranty, just like the Thunder, they do offer United States technical support, but you will be emailing back and forth with them because there is no number that you can call to get in touch with them. I have dealt with issues with them in the past where I had to email back and forth. It took around two to three days to get my issues resolved. All right, now that we got some of the specs out of the way, let's talk about accessories between these three lasers. So first off, let's talk about the honeycomb bed, which is my favorite thing. Both the Thunderbolt and the Glowforge Pro come with the honeycomb bed. However, the X-Tool does not. The X-Tool comes with the knives, and then you can upgrade to the honeycomb bed for an additional $170. I personally like the honeycomb bed way more because I've had a lot of issues with the knives. When cutting material, a lot of times it falls through and those pieces that I may need sometimes fall underneath where it's cutting the next spot. And that laser beam does damage those pieces. So overall, I would recommend if you're gonna get the X tool to upgrade to the honeycomb bed. Next, let's talk about the crumb tray. The crumb tray comes in all three of these machines. For the Thunderbolt, the crumb tray is easily removable. So you're gonna drop down the front and pull out that crumb tray and it slides right out on these rubber wheels. And then you can dump your scraps into the trash can and clean the crumb tray very easily. Similarly, the X tool has the same concept. It's just a little more difficult because you have to remove a screw. But once that's removed, you can pull the tray out, dump it, and clean it as well. The Glowforge is a little bit more different. That is actually connected to the honeycomb bed. So you'll have to remove the whole thing to dump the pieces out. And then you are not able to get in there to actually clean it. So all in all, the Glowforge version of it is my least favorite. And the Thunderbolt is my most favorite just because how easily accessible that it is. So let's talk about camera head. All three of these lasers do offer a camera head in their machine. The Thunderbolt acts as an additional visual source in your laser bed, but it is not the primary source for lining up and locating your material. What this means is on the software that you'll be using, you'll be able to see in your laser bed. However, you will still have to set the origin for your machine to line up whatever design or file you are then cutting or engraving. Whereas both the X-Tool P2 and the Glowforge use their camera heads actually as the primary source of lining up your design to your material. Once your material is in your machine, that image will then pop up on whatever software you are using and you'll then be able to drag over and line up your design on top of the material and wherever that image is now placed, that is exactly where it's going to engrave or cut. Lasers offer so many different types of materials and items that you can engrave. One being tumblers, and to do that, you need a rotary. So with the Thunderbolt, the only additional accessory you need to purchase is a rotary to be able to engrave cups. Once you purchase the rotary, which can run you from anywhere from $700 to $1,000, you can then remove your crumb tray, drop your rotary in, and start engraving tumblers. We use Rotoboss for our Thunder lasers, and I'll attach a link below of which ones we use. We have zero complaints about them. They're an amazing company to work with. For the X-Tool P2, you do have to purchase the riser bed, like we mentioned before, to give you that extra depth. And then on top of that, you have to purchase the rotary, which is an additional $300. The Glowforge, you cannot have a rotary in because like we mentioned before, it maxes out at that two inches. Another accessory that I want to talk about is laser lenses. Both the X-Tool and the Glowforge do not offer any additional laser heads. So they are pretty minimal when it comes to that. However, the Thunderbolt offers an array of different lenses. First being the one and a half inch lens that comes with the machine, the two inch lens, the two and a half inch lens, and the four inch lens. All these can be swapped out and used for different material thicknesses that you wanna cut, and also having a higher resolution for engraving. So once you have your material in your laser, how do you now let the machine know the thickness of your material? All three of these lasers do offer autofocus, However, the Thunderbolt is the only one that uses a touch probe. This touch probe is used to measure and adjust the material thickness by bringing the bed up till it touches the touch probe. And once it reaches a certain point, it'll then re-lower the bed to give the exact measurement that the material is from the laser head. So the X-Tool P2 uses a pinpoint to actually measure and adjust the laser head in regards to where the material is. So based off of how thick it is, it'll actually move the laser head up and down to make sure that is the proper distance away from your material. Lastly, the Glowforge Pro uses a camera that is attached to the laser head itself to measure the distance. Out of these three, I find that the test probe is the most accurate. 
and the least likely for the laser head to get knocked out of alignment because it is moving based off of the bed and not actually by the laser. So once your material is focused, how are you going to be interacting with your machine and get your laser running? We're going to start backwards and start with the Glowforge. Glowforge has one button on the laser and that is how you start it and get your project running. Similarly, the X tool also has one button. However, it does have a few indicators so that you know what is going on with your laser. The Thunderbolt has the updated Rueda controller that is both touchscreen and colored. From this controller, you can just about do everything from controlling the X, Y, and Z to setting your origin to selecting your files and even framing your designs on your material. On your machine, you can also use this key to turn your machine on and on the Thunder Laser, they also offer a light system or an indicator light that'll let you know when your machine is running, it'll be red. And when your file or your project is complete, it'll then light up green. Now that we've gone over all the different specs and accessories between all three of these lasers, we are going to do a live side by side with engraving and cutting to see how each laser performs. Check it out. As you can see, the Thunderbolt blew the X tool and the Glowforge out of the water when it came to time. As for quality, I would say the Thunderbolt and the X tool P2 were pretty equal. As for the Glowforge, the quality wasn't as clear. Now for the cutting portion. I chose a design that was a little bit more detailed to see how each of these lasers would perform. The settings for these are going to vary a little bit just because the wattage is different for all three lasers. But as you can see, when it came down to time, the X tool and the Thunderbolt were pretty equal. The Thunderbolt was just a bit quicker than the X tool. And then the Glowforge was at least two times slower than both of these machines. So overall, after owning these machines for quite some time, I have to say that the Thunderbolt is the best option when it comes to the software that it uses, the accessories that it comes with, the accessories that you get to add on, and the interface. It's definitely the best bang for your buck. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe. If you guys have any comments at all or questions, please put them in the comment section and we'll be happy to answer. See you next time.